Most of the Great Barrier Reef is a long way offshore, more than 100 kilometres from Stone Island at the entrance to Bowen Harbour. Corals are generally thought to be in decline in such shallow waters adjacent to the Australian mainland. Yet when the tide goes out, I can see them, shallow inshore reefs. Bowen is a town on the Queensland coast where there is easy and inexpensive access to coral reefs. In town, at Horseshoe Bay Beach, so scenic with its rocky headlands, corals can be found just metres into and under the water. And there are coral reefs adjacent to coastal mangroves and mudflats not far to the south. But one of this region's greatest underwater treasures lies in the shallow waters about two kilometres offshore. Hi, I'm Dr Jennifer Morohassi. I'd like to invite you on an adventure to a beautiful coral garden, one the experts claim has been destroyed by global warming. Our team of reef adventurers set off from Bowen Marina on a journey of discovery. Our mission brief was simple. Underwater exploration and photography to provide a visual record of whatever we found beneath the waves. After we rounded the northeast headland at Stone Island with Gloucester Island in the background, Walter threw the anchor. We were set to explore just one of Stone Island's fringing coral reefs. On the 27th of August 2019, I was with marine biologist Walter Stark, the skipper Rob McCulloch and Clint Hempsall. Clint was filming. Clint is always filming. I was in a rush to dive in and to see for myself if there really was any coral. The skipper kept a lookout. Walter soon joined me. Walter is 80 years old and has spent his entire life diving reefs. With a PhD from the University of Miami in Florida, he has discovered over 100 species of fish and is a recognized pioneer in underwater photography. Under the water, we were surprised to see so much coral, the texture and colors so subtle at this reef and all under a dappled light, a true coral garden. Such a diversity of coral types, but especially a folios coral, somewhat like an open cabbage in appearance, both beige and also purple in colour at this reef. More than a hundred years ago, back in the late 1800s, the coral reefs of Stone Island were described and photographed by a naturalist, formerly employed by the British Museum. William Saville Kent. It was perhaps this species that Kent described as cup-shaped or variously convoluted foliaceous of a golden brown hue. I described the coral as beige in colour, which is a brown with orange undertones. Most corals worldwide are beige because this is the colour of the most common chlorophyll in the symbiotic zooxanthellae which are the unicellular algae that live within corals. Kent identified this coral at Stone Island as belonging to the genus Turbinaria. Many of these corals are fragile, easily broken by large waves. This Turbinaria colony will not exist forever, perhaps not beyond the next cyclone season. This reef has gone through countless cycles over the last at least 4,500 years. It has been destroyed by cyclones and could be destroyed by another cyclone. During times of calmer weather, this reef has regrown.
The other dominant coral species at this reef is an Acropora, with either white or purple tips. I was privileged to have this experience, to drift across these shallow coral colonies, pausing to take photographs, mid shots and also close ups of the intricate structures to help with identification to species. The tips that are white on the Acropora are not bleached. They are very much alive. These tips, these axial coralites, are fluorescent. They glow. Below the glowing tips, close up, you can see tentacles, which extend from the coral's polyps. These polyps sit in radial coralites. The branch structure I'm defining is specific to the genus Acropora. Yet according to a scientific report, Published in the prestigious journal Nature, there are no longer any Acropora at Stone Island. According to the current consensus, there were Acropora when Kent was photographing more than 100 years ago, but since 1994 there are, and I quote, no living Acropora colonies, they're dead, along with other corals now covered in mud. This claim is of course irreconcilable with what we saw and with what Clint has filmed. You can see from his cinematography close to 100% coral cover at this reef, not just of different Acropora and Turbinaria, but there are also species of plate corals, encrusting corals and massive boulder corals. Massive, boulder-shaped corals are slow growing. This coral has relatively large tentacles that were extended. Massive corals are seldom damaged by strong wave action unless they are dislodged from their holdfast. These Acropora and this reef are denied in the scientific reports that create the consensus as reported on the nightly news. Well, compared to the outer reef, there's a, probably a higher percentage of coral cover and a lot more delicate forms because it's more protected waters and uh, it's more luxuriant looking than you normally get on an outer reef. Throughout history, individuals have been crushed by the masses, particularly when their evidence does not concur with the overall agenda. Rational argument is not possible when people think in terms of slogans, especially when some of those in authority have no real first-hand experience of nature. This large colony, perhaps a Galaxia species, has been overturned, most likely by a storm or cyclone, yet it has kept growing. Some of us persist. But even Clint can only film so much in one day. Like William Savile Kent, he is leaving a valuable legacy through this underwater cinematography which enables the wide angle viewing of so many different coral species below the water rocked by the tide. There is now a record of this reef for this moment in time. Perspective can be so important in life and also for understanding a coral reef. Zooming out above the reef provides yet another perspective on the colours and shapes, distribution and abundance of the corals.
Kent never mentioned purple, but there are also patches where purple cabbage corals dominate at this reef. It is also possible to see from the air the relative size of these purple clusters next to the several large white boulder corals. If the corals were bleached, they would appear as a mass of bone white because they would be devoid of their zooxanthellae. But none of these corals have been bleached. There was even a green coral. And so many fluorescent purple tips on the Acropora. This reef is not bleached, nor has it been reduced to mud flat. Though it might be described as a golden brown colour, it is beige reef for me. There's some beautiful folios coral, it's just delicate. The structure's delicate, beige colour, white rimming, it's just absolutely beautiful. Filming these corals at this reef is a form of resistance. Our purpose is very simple, to acknowledge beige reef that fringes the north facing bay at Stone Island. To be acknowledged is to be admitted and accepted as true. Thank you for being a part of this adventure. To stay in the loop, subscribe at jennifermorahassi.com and join the Institute of Public Affairs, ipa.org.au. Thank you.